I'm Jane, your Kitchen GPS, helping you navigate your way to delicious meals. Last time, I covered the importance of using the right cookware and the correct oil that will get your cooking adventure off in the right direction. The key takeaways included using stainless steel or cast iron for frying and high heat cooking and protecting your non-cooked stickware by never using cooking spray, sticking them in the dishwasher, or putting them in the oven. Regarding oil, stick to canola oil when frying or cooking over high heat and save your olive oil for dressings, marinades, and drizzles. Unless, of course, you like cooking in a smoke-filled kitchen. Now, let's kick things up a notch and talk about some best practices for upping the overall quality and taste of your food. Recipes are like roadmaps. They provide solid direction, but there's a couple of important tips that aren't always included, and these do make a difference in your end result. To start, it's important that your ingredients are room temperature. Not warm, but not cold from the refrigerator. This is a game changer when it comes to meat, poultry, and fish. Taking the chill off of protein before cooking will produce juicier and more evenly cooked meat. This was a tough one for me as I'm a bit of a germaphobe and I grew up believing that I would kill people if I let the chicken sit out on the counter for a half hour. Not true. Thankfully, in today's world, when you're buying quality meat from a reputable grocer or butcher and implementing basic food safety common sense, there's little to no health risk by bringing your meats up to room temp. Instead, you will be thrilled with how much better your food is turning out. The next game-changing best practice is to heat your pan and the oil before adding the ingredients. The reason is simple. You don't want your food to soak up the oil which is exactly what happens if you add the food to a cold pan. The result is soggy, not crispy. I don't know why it took me so long to figure this one out because it just makes common sense. The goal here is to heat the pan until the oil is hot, but not smoking. The easiest way to tell if your oil is hot enough is when it begins to shimmer glisten and ripple in the pan. You may never have noticed this before, but the oil does change as the pan heats up. Pay attention a couple of times and soon it will become an automatic reflex. You're just going to know when that glistening and rippling effect starts to occur. Another way, if you're not sure, is you can put the end of a wooden spoon into the oil. If bubbles appear around the edges of the wood, then it's ready. This is way too much work for me, but if you want, go for it. I'm good with just looking for the shimmer in the pan. Implementing these two best practices into your cooking routine will help you enjoy the payoff of lighter, crispier, and more evenly cooked dishes. For more tips and hacks, visit impressnotstress.com where you'll also find recipes that are sure to impress, not stress. I'm Jane, your Kitchen GPS, helping you navigate your way to delicious meals.